whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment for silence and for self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have left undone and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. O oh God, you give you, us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for this morning is according to Acts, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, towards a road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went, and now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this char chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, he asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that was he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearers, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and 
Philip was baptized. Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to the towns until he came to Caesarea. Here is the first reading. The second reading is according to 1 John, chapter 4, beginning with the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. I hope we all caught that. I'll continue. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he was given, he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God's love abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here is the second reading. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to the Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear fruit much fruit, and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated.
you. You have called us, you have grafted us in, you have claimed us, and we are yours. What you have flows from you to us, and from that we give you thanks. Grant us your spirit, as always, this morning. Flow in and through us and around us, lifting us up and pushing us out to be your disciples. And grant us, O oh God, all that is needful. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. I'd like to read to you uh, the Gospel text, but this time from the message. I am the real vine, and my Father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine can you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Sometimes John's Gospel gets a little bit flowery. I don't know whether you've noticed that. Sometimes it's hard for us in the 21st century to understand the words that Jesus spoke and are written down in John's Gospel. We can't do anything apart from Jesus. Boom. Sermon done. I can go sit down now. Right? No. I guess I have to talk longer because I'm Pastor Barb. Anyway, last week we focused on the Good Shepherd, right? I am the shepherd the good one, not the bad one, not the priests, not the kings. I'm the shepherd, the good one that has come for you. And that comes out of the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. And you have in John's Gospel all the I am statements. So you have I am the bread of life. That's from the 6th chapter of John's Gospel. You have I am the light of the world. That's the 8th chapter. I am the door or the gate, that's the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd, or the shepherd, the good one, that's the 10th chapter. I am the resurrection and the life, that's the 11th chapter. I am the way, the truth, and the life, that's the 14th chapter. And now we're in the 15th chapter, and it is, I am the vine, and you are the branches. A branch, as you know, does not live apart from a vine. Go into the field sometime and look. Once they're broken, what happens to the fruit that was on that vine? Oh, you can talk if you want. I can tell you right now, it's dead. And it doesn't take long once it's broken and apart from the main vine for the whole branch to be dead, not just the fruit. How long does fruit last on your table? I can tell you I have some bad oranges and some bad apples I gotta get rid of when I get home. I just thought about that. That's a bad thing. They've been sitting there. We didn't eat them so fast. Once they start to go bad, I just leave them. And I think Mike walks by and he looks at them and says, I can't wait for her to throw those away. <laughs> 
We all know what happens when we're separated from that which is life-giving, don't we? And the reality is we are to be attached. Dr. Tony Evans talks about fruit in three ways. He says, fruit always bears the character of the tree or the vine it comes from. That's true. You won't have apples growing on a pear tree and you won't have pears growing on an orange tree. We try and mix them up sometimes. We splice them together, but instead of having two different trees, you end up having some kind of new fruit eventually. Right? There are people who splice things together. They're hoping for the best. And that's how we get better grapes all, all the time, as these vineyards, they keep splicing things together. But the character of the tree or the vine is seen in the fruit. The second thing he said is, fruit is always visible. Fruit doesn't hide. I have a non-bearing apple tree in my yard. It's really pretty right now. It has flowers blooming all over. We aren't going to get one darn apple off of that tree. It is a non-bearing apple tree. It's pretty. That's all. And then I have something I could say, but I won't. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I will. I, I was so mad at the city of Aurora last year. I came home and I had all my branches laying. I mean, they were trimming trees and they didn't even ask me. I was so upset. I'm from Iowa. You're supposed to have branches that come out over where you park your car so they give you shade. I was so upset. This has nothing to do with Jesus, maybe. It has everything to do with Jesus. I even called the city. And you know what they told me? It wasn't my tree. I said, it's in my yard. They said, no, it's not six feet in your yard. It is our tree. We can do with that tree whatever we want. I might think that I'm the vine. I'm not. I'm a branch. And I don't belong to me. And you don't belong to you. And the people sitting next to you don't belong to themselves, nor do they belong to you either. We don't belong to Aurora, but we do belong to Jesus. <laughs> and if he needs to trim us back so we produce a little bit more, it might hurt for a while. But oh, my branches this year are gorgeous. I was mad about the wrong thing. The other thing that Dr. Tony Evans says is fruit always is for the benefit of somebody else. Fruit doesn't eat itself unless it's rotten. Get that one. The fruit is there for the pleasure of another. When God created those fruit trees, he made them not just so the fruit would rot, but that the fruit might be shared and would make a difference for others. You and I are here not for ourselves. We're here for the mission of Jesus Christ. And if we're attached to the one who is the vine, if we are attached to Jesus and the life flow that comes through him hits us and we begin to bear fruit, oh my goodness sakes, how tasty will that be? Because as we read in 1 John, his fruit is love. His fruit truly is pleasant to the taste and overwhelms us with grace and mercy and peace and justice and hope and kindness and compassion. Those are the fruits of God's love that flows through him to you and to me. That's what makes the difference in the world. When we're about ourselves, we start eating on ourselves, and finally we just get rotten. And we've all had those moments and then hope that God grabs us back in. 
So I, I'll tell you this little secret. But even if things get really bad and you've pulled yourself away and you've been cut off and you find yourselves dying, I always talk about it this at baptism. Bonnie loves it. We are here. God comes, grabs hold of us, and even at those times we let go, God will hold on to us. And I guarantee he wants to graft us back in because he wants his fruit to be formed in you. He wants his love, his grace, his mercy to be seen in how you live your life. And if you truly are grafted into him, won't that be the given? It's going to flow in and through you. A branch is there. A branch is there, but once it's grafted in, fruit will flow through it. Jesus is the vine, and you have done absolutely nothing to be attached to him. You have done absolutely nothing to be attached to him. It is Jesus that flows through you, not the other way around. I read a book by Francis Chan when I was on my sabbatical a couple of years ago, and I really like him. He's simplistic. Um, and, and he talked about it in this way. He said, we're connected just like he's the shepherd, we're the sheep. We don't do anything. We just follow the shepherd around. He's the vine, we're the branches. We don't do anything. We're just attached to him. And the question is, how is it that his blood and life force throws or flows through us? How are you connected? You're connected in his word. We talk about it almost every week. I can't say it enough. We're connected in his word. We're connected in worship. We're connected in music. We're connected in our relationship with one another. We are connected to Jesus in multi multifaceted ways. And once we start removing ourselves from that connection, we start to die spiritually. Y'all know the old story, don't you, of the person who had left church and the pastor went over and sat there and this old guy said, oh, you're probably going to talk to me about getting back to church, aren't you? Because, you know, that's what pastors are supposed to do. I'm not real great at that. The fire was going. You know this story, don't you? And the pastor went over and he got the little things to pick up the hot coals. And he took the hot coal and he put it outside the fire. And the flame went down until it was ice cold. And then the pastor picked it up and put it back closer to the flame. And as it was closer to the flame, it started to heat up. And then he put it in the flame and it, boom, was alive again. And the guy said to the pastor, I got your point. <laughs> it's hard to be a flame for God when we're separated from God. God wants his life force, his love, all of these gifts to flow through us. And if we say we love Jesus, but we don't love our neighbors, 1 John says what? You're a liar. Oh, that's pretty simple. Pretty disturbing too, isn't it? I guess... Uh, keep going, but I, I think what I need to do is just say, how are you connected? Huh? How are you rooted in Jesus? How is his life force flowing through you? Are you getting to the point where you are getting more and more separated from his life source? I have a, on the sign out here, I need to do it better so you can read it better. It says, the longer you miss church, the more you'll miss church. The easier it is to miss church. The longer we separate our, 
ourselves from Jesus, nothing good's going to come of it. And our world needs good. And our world needs love, and our world needs mercy, and our world needs Jesus, which means our world needs us. Because, as First John says, we're him in this world. How is your fruit? Is it juicy and good? Are people saying, ah, I want what she has, or oh, I like what he has. I want to be attached where they're attached. Is that what is being said about you or about me? Because your character, if you're attached to the vine, should be awfully juicy. Right? Isn't that what Dr. Evans said? Yeah, oh, yeah. The character of the tree or vine is seen in the fruit. And your fruit should be visible. And it's there for somebody else. That's good enough for me. So let's pray. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. How great is your vineyard and how wonderful is your vine. Teach us always what it means to be connected to you. And if you need to regraft us in, Lord, do it because we need you. Fill us with your love and with your grace and with your mercy and allow that to be the fruit that is seen for those around us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. I have a confession to make. I don't know whether your minds wander, but I'm up here saying the Lord's or the, the creed, and I'm thinking about the prayers of the church. I have to say, I feel better knowing that um, that Martin Luther had a monk that came to him and said, and I've said this in church before, he said, I can pray the Lord's Prayer and not think about anything else. And Luther said, okay, if you can do that, I'll give you my horse. And he said, our Father who art in heaven, hey, will you throw in the wagon too? <laughs> We're not alone when our mind wanders, so uh, I, I feel good about that. Oh, boy. A couple of prayers that I want to um, add in. Yeah, you, you should have the prayers in your um, bulletin <clears throat> on the back side. But Janet Ross, Tanya's aunt, had a massive stroke and may not survive it. So we want to lift up Janet Ross. Also, um, Pastor Paul, Sigler as COVID. I know we have a couple of people from their church this morning, and we do need to lift Pastor Paul up this morning. So let's focus on the one who is life-giving, the one who loves us, and the one we're connected to. Christ by his power 
and the Holy Spirit to bring our prayers before God, whose promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all truthfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love. Those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. We especially this morning lift up Tanya's aunt, Janet Ross. We pray for Pastor Paul Ziegler. For Danny Cowan and Sylvia. And she's concerned for him. For Cindy Browning and Jamie Browning's brother-in-law. For Brienne Massingale and Vance Carroll. For Jeannie. For Linda. For Jack Underwood and Gloria Underwood and family. We lift up those from our congregation who are shutting. For Pat French and Eleanor Cuddy, we lift up Helen Nold and Donna Hall and the Kranzlers. We give you thanks, O Lord, that Ruth Matthews has no more cancer in the brain, but we pray that as she still struggles with cancer, the doctors will have the right mix and your healing hand will be upon her. And we thank you that Jeff Madlock and Jeannie Davis and Robert are all doing so much better. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you could prepare your communion. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you, keeping you in his grace, his truth, and his love, now and forever. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. It's for pastor to have things to give to people that come asking for food. We're not starting a food bank here. We're, we just feed things that are listed there for that. There's also that you can go to King Stoopers. Pastor Barb has people in need of more than that. And if you buy $25 or $50 King Stoopers cards and put them in the back when you come to church in the offering plate, they don't go in the box. Or you can also mail them in. Well, and let's say, well, we do have... A new mailbox that really is great. Nobody can get into this one unless they have a hammer. So you can mail them to us, or you can bring them into the church office. Yeah, and then make sure, if you want, you get the uh, at the church office, write your name on the receipt and get it to the data, and it, you can have it at list as part of your giving for the gift cards. Thank you so much. Go in peace, sir.